Next on Currents News, major action from Cardinal Daniel DiNardo and the U.S. Bishops Conference to confront sex abuse in the wake of Theodore McCarrick's resignation. The latest is next. The California wildfires are getting worse. Tonight, thousands of structures are under threat. The latest on 3D guns, downloading the plans for the plastic weapons is halted. Plus, the Pope warns pilgrims about the dangers of fortune telling. The news starts right now. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Fobles. The Catholic Church in America is taking action in response to Theodore McCarrick's resignation from the College of Cardinals following credible sex abuse allegations. President of the U.S. Bishops Conference, Cardinal Daniel DiNardo, said this afternoon that he and his brother bishops are developing a major course of action to better protect the people of God. So far, there are four key points. Local dioceses across the country are to respond with justice and compassion to anyone sexually abused or harassed in the church. All survivors are urged to come forward, and if a crime has been committed, contact law enforcement. The Bishop's Conference is launching a full investigation of McCarrick's conduct, determined to find the truth, and Cardinal DiNardo said a spiritual conversion is needed to restore the right relationship with the Lord. Joining us now to discuss these developments, Bishop Michael Olson of Fort Worth, Texas, a powerful voice in the Catholic Church. Your Excellency, thank you so much for being with us today. Bishop Olson, what is your reaction to Cardinal DiNardo's course of action? Well, um, I'd say it's not a reaction as much as it's a response, and I stand with him as the president of the conference. Uh, I appreciate very much uh, the Cardinal speaking on our behalf in this regard. Um, you know, especially uh, the most important thing is that we focus on those who've been hurt, uh, particularly those who have been hurt from sexual misconduct as well as sexual abuse, uh, abuse of power. Uh, and I would further add um, as well those of our faithful, all of us who have been harmed through scandal. And the scandal is this, that it it's makes us jaundiced or... or um, cynical about the possibility of living the gospel uh, and that the message of the gospel is somehow not true and therefore not compelling to put into practice. And that's a very uh, real harm that is, is being done uh, by this current uh, crisis in the church. Bishop, the Cardinal speaks of anger, he speaks of sadness, and he speaks of shame, but most of all, he asks himself in a moment of introspection, was there more that he could have done to, to help those that are so helpless in these situations? Do you echo those sentiments at all, Your Excellency? Every one of us has a responsibility to examine our consciences, but more than, uh, it, it only becomes introspective, introspective uh, and in a sense self-possessed uh, self, uh, um, unless we put it into action through a firm purpose of amendment uh, that calls us to change our behavior and where we really do act that way. Um, policies are not enough. Po good policies do not make good practices. Good practices help us to discern sound policies which lead to better practices. I think uh, there is anger and there is sadness. And the anger I would like to see is something that can prompt us actually to change our behavior and change actions uh, in accord with the gospel. Bishop, you are very forceful and very candid making the case that justice requires church leadership be held to account because if officials knew about the allegations and did nothing, that enabled others to be hurt. Can you expound on that a little bit more and talk to us a little bit more about what the church needs to do to make sure this does not happen anymore? Uh, I think we don't want to act rashly, but we need to act decisively, and that requires a clear, honest discourse that ends in decision, which ends in, in action. Were we responsible to know something and then didn't know it? That's another question that we need to do in our own examination, but also that needs to be done in an evaluation of any type of process like this. Did we Were we accountable to say something, to find out? There's a moral obligation uh, to know 
what we need to know to responsibly care for the for all of our sheep, all of Christ's sheep, and particularly the vulnerable. Bishop, we had the opportunity to speak with a victim of clerical abuse uh, just this past week, and, and we talked to him about painting the priesthood and, and prelates with broad strokes. There is so much happening right now, a lot of horrible things happening. What do you say to the faithful that are struggling to try to make sense of this and move forward from it and heal? First of all, I don't think we can move forward for it. We need to move through it. Mm. We can move around it, all right? This is not simply uh, a matter of how we interpret the priesthood. It's how do we receive it and how do we live it, all right? And do we live it in correspondence with Christ, head and shepherd of the church, in whose image we've been ordained and our priestly ordination and even fully in our Episcopal ordination, all right? And that has to be our standard and benchmark for evaluating and assessing ourselves. Bishop Olson, the, the issue and the question has been about transparency. With that in mind, where do we go next? I think transparency, it's a term that also has boundaries in and of itself, uh, because transparency is not absolute, obviously not, when uh, to be thoroughly, totally transparent would also mean to jeopardize uh, those who've been harmed, those who are vulnerable, those who are victims. Transparency also has to have the limits of checks and balances of responsible authority and leadership. All right, that in a sense, while one man ultimately makes a decision in a case, it's an informed decision made with sound counsel uh, and prudentially judged and then enacted. All right, so that it's not simply reliant on a closed system. Uh, it, which, with all sorts of things where secrecy might be able to prevail. Bishop Olson, do you find, do you believe that the way the Holy Father Pope Francis is now addressing the situation will help us move through it, as you've said? I trust the movement of the Holy Spirit as it, as it works through uh, the office of, of the, the successor of Peter, of our Holy Father Pope Francis. Uh, we have seen his actions done before in humility, uh, in judgment, um, in many of these things, this is an uncharted reality, and he also has to rely on his advisors uh, and those who know these things for him to, to inform him for his judgment. The church is founded by Christ, and the chair of Peter has his guarantee. And so we have to trust that as an action of faith, but we also have to help the Holy Father to carry out his apostolic ministry. We have to do our parts too. Bishop Olson, your voice and your candor are appreciated and your insight is appreciated. Thank you so much for making the time to talk to us about this very difficult situation. Thank you. The Bishop of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania is making an unprecedented move to confront the sex abuse crisis. A grand jury in the state is about to report on allegations in six of the state's dioceses that would name more than 300 people. This afternoon, Bishop Ronald Guinier made public the identities of 71 individuals who've been accused. The list includes priests, deacons, and seminarians. None are currently in ministry, the bishop said. He also ordered that names of bishops dating back to 1947 be removed from buildings. And a Pennsylvania priest subject to that grand jury investigation, Father John Sweeney, pleaded guilty yesterday to abusing a boy. The crime occurred in the early 1990s. Sweeney was part of Pennsylvania's Greensburg Diocese and could be sentenced to five years in prison. Incredibly, the California wildfires are getting worse. Tens of thousands of structures are threatened by the flames. Natasha Chen is in California with the very latest on that. We have a long way to go uh, in this fire season. California officials are saying that all hands are on deck in the fight against wildfires that have already burned at least 320,000 acres across the state. We're fighting the fires on the ground and in the air. Uh, we're providing manned and unmanned surveillance systems to assist CAL FIRE with fire mapping. Whatever resources are needed, uh, we're, we're putting them there. Authorities are currently fighting 16 large wildfires across the state, including the Car Fire, which has burned 115,000 acres near Redding, California, killed at least six people, and is now the sixth most destructive fire in California history. It was just a tornado fire over the house. 
Amanda Woodley and Ed Bledsoe lost three members of their family when they say the car fire suddenly crossed the river and engulfed the area. Uh, this is my baby, this is my wife. I should have been laying on there with them. Other major wildfires burning across California include the Ferguson Fire burning near Yosemite National Park and the Mendocino Complex. Authorities and forecasters both say residents should expect things to get worse before they get better. It is very serious. Uh, we've seen the lives that have been lost. The predictions that things would get drier and hotter uh, are occurring, and that will continue. In Redding, California, Natasha Chen, Currents News. No 3D gun plans will be online anytime soon. A federal judge has blocked their release after an uproar was triggered. Judge Robert Lasnick sided with states that argued posting instructions for the 3D printing of plastic guns would be a safety hazard. The judge ruled a temporary ban on the blueprints. The issue will return to court on August 10th. A loss in court for the Archdiocese of Washington in their appeal to have Christmas advertisements appear on city buses. The U.S. Court of Appeals ruled that the Transit Authority was within its rights to ban the religious-themed ads. Last December, the TA rejected the ads after issuing new guidelines. Brave men who fought and died for their country are now being sent home. Dozens of coffins believed to be carrying American service members killed in the Korean War were sent to Hawaii for identification. The 55 boxes were part of an agreement between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. Experts are calling it the largest unilateral turnover of remains received from North Korea. There's a lot more news headed your way. A Catholic pastor is attacked in church. He was trying to help a troubled young man. Catholic leaders in the Holy Land are criticizing Israel's new law that changes the country's character. Everything just went black. She was on board a tour boat when a lava bomb struck. She survived thanks to the kindness of strangers. And do you have a story idea, something happening in your parish we should know about? We want to hear from you, so keep this email handy. News tips at thesalesmedia.org. We will be right back. A brutal attack at a Delaware Catholic church. The pastor's hospitalized after offering counseling to a troubled young man. Currents News' Michelle Powers reports. Resurrection Church near Wilmington, Delaware is closed today after police say its pastor was violently attacked by a man he was trying to help. It was scheduled counseling a session. During that counseling session, it got heated and an argument ensued. Pastor William Graney was counseling Joshua August when suddenly August snapped. Witnesses told police they walked in on the 25-year-old punching and kicking the 74-year-old pastor in the stomach and head. They tried to stop August, but he allegedly got even more aggressive, grabbing a wine bottle, hitting the pastor on the head with it, and then pouring the wine on Father Graney. His injuries were significant um, and they was treated at the local hospital. It's a very tragic event. August was arrested at the church after he tried to flee from police on a skateboard. Parishioners are now praying for the pastor's speedy recovery. To have something out of the blue like that happen, especially at a church, you know, that's just wrong. I am so sad. I just wanted to cry. I mean, to assault anybody at all but a pastor. August is being held on $52,000 bail for assault and resisting arrest. Michelle Powers, Current News. As the parishioners pray for Father Graney's recovery, we are told the pastor is in the hospital in stable condition. The controversial new law in Israel that gives exclusive rights to Jewish people in coming under, is coming under fire from Catholic leaders in the Holy Land. The Patriarch of Jerusalem has spoken out against the new nation state law. Archbishop Pierre Batista Pizzaballa released a statement saying the new law is of, quote, cause of great concern. He adds that the law fails to provide any constitutional guarantees for the rights of the minorities living in the country. The nation state law gives Jews the right to national self-determination and makes Hebrew the official language. Cardinal Edwin O'Brien of the Vatican office that watches over the Holy Land is also speaking out against the new law. That law has uh, reversed the 1948 Declaration of Independence of the Jewish people and the Jewish state, which stated full equality regardless of race or religion or sex, to everyone who lives in the Holy Land. That has been abrogated. He adds that more work needs to be done in order for young people and their families to survive. 
Facebook thinks Russia is again targeting U.S. elections, creating fake social media postings about politics. Drew Griffin reports. Facebook calls it inauthentic behavior, and though Facebook can't be sure, it sure looks like Russia again. 32 pages with names including Black Elevation, Resistors, Aztlan Warriors, being followed by 290,000 accounts. The fake accounts also setting up and promoting real events and protests aimed at further polarizing U.S. political discourse. Everybody in! Everybody out! Many of the events did occur, including this one last year in New York City, attended by actual Americans who likely had no idea that the Resisters Facebook page was probably run by Russians. Another event by the same group was supposed to take place in a couple of weeks. Resisters set up a counter-protest against white supremacists at the White House August 10th. Five other real groups signed on to participate. As Facebook was announcing its crackdown on these potential Russian sites, the U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security was at a cybersecurity conference saying there's no doubt Russia meddled in the 2016 election. Everyone and everything is now a target. And Russian actors may be added again, comparing the upcoming midterm elections to a looming storm. But today, I believe the next major attack is more likely to reach us online than on an airplane. We are in a crisis mode. The Cat 5 hurricane has been forecast, and now we must prepare. Facebook says these current pages all shut down have the hallmarks of the activities the Russians did around the presidential election. Though there are some differences, this time the pages didn't lead back to Russian IP addresses, and they used third-party services to buy ads to boost their posts and encourage people to follow the pages. Facebook is now notifying its users who were in contact with these fake sites about the deceptive groups and the possibility of the Russians trying to meddle in U.S. politics. A cardinal won't be running for office in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Cardinal Laurent Passigna is considered by many to be the most respected person in the country. A petition drive urged him to challenge President Joseph Kabila in December elections. But the cardinal says he, quote, has other things to do. Still to come on Currents News, the harrowing story of a young woman on a tour boat. Her life changed when a lava bomb struck. The Pope is cautioning Catholics about the dangers of idols and trying to peer into the future. We'll be right back. A family vacation gone wrong. Young Jessica Tilton from Illinois was out on a tour boat with her family in Hawaii when disaster struck, caused by the Kilauea volcano. Manolo Morales reports on her harrowing ordeal. I, everything just went black, and it was, you didn't see anything. I just, you, you just felt like you were suffocating, and I thought I was dying. Tilton describes the lava rocks combined with ash as a cloud that overcame the left side of the tour boat. She was sitting closest to the railing and says she leaned over to protect her sister sitting right next to her when a lava rock about two feet in diameter hit her. I kept screaming like my leg because my leg hurt really bad. And I remember the, the captain saying, uh, is anyone hurt? And then my dad was yelling like my daughter, my daughter is hurt. She's grateful to those who helped, including two surgeons who were also sightseeing. There was a French surgeon, um, he left his own sons that were injured. He, he was there. the nicest man ever. I cannot thank him enough. I don't even remember his name, and he was so nice. He was, the nice, he was seriously the nicest man alive. She says she raised concerns about how close the boat was getting right before everything happened. It was too close for comfort for me personally. And, uh, you know, I, I said that to my sister. I just thought it was a little close. So now she has a long road to recovery with her leg broken in two places, as well as injuries to her hips and back. It's, it's getting there. It's a challenge every day. But, you know, it's just kind of using a lot of hope. And, you know, just the goal of just returning to normal life. Oh, poor thing. The Coast Guard is investigating that incident. 
A surprising discovery in the California wildfires, an heirloom under the rubble of a family home. After searching for a half hour, Jerry Ogle found his grandmother's diamond wedding ring hidden among the ashes of his now destroyed home. Jerry said he prayed to his deceased grandfather for help. 30 seconds later, he found that ring. And a miracle after a plane crashed in Mexico. All 103 people survived when an Aeromexico plane went down in Durango yesterday, landing in a field just past the runway. Of the 99 passengers and four crew members, 49 people are in the hospital, but miraculously, no one died. Investigators have yet to determine the cause of the airliner's accident. How many of us would love to know the future? Well, before you go visit a psychic or buy a set of tarot cards, Pope Francis is warning against such practices. Cody Williams tells us more. The Pope said people today keep a real supermarket of idols, one of them a concrete temptation that he warned against. Io vi domando, quanti di voi siete andate a che vi votassero le carte per vedere il futuro? The Holy Father mentioned other similar idols, such as beauty, fame, or money, that promise happiness but actually take one's own life. Il Dio vero non chiede la vita, ma la donna, la regala. Il Dio vero non offre una proiezione del nostro su successo, ma insegna ad amare. Il Dio vero non chiede figli, ma dona suo figlio per noi. Thus, Pope Francis urged each pilgrim to recognize his or her own idol in order to be freed from it. Portate questo nel cuore. Gli idoli ci rubano l'amore. Gli idoli ci rendono cecchi all'amore. E per amare davvero bisogna essere liberi da ogni idoli. Qual è il mio idolo? Toglielo e buttalo dalla finestra. To conclude, the Pope reminded that idols keep us from appreciating the present because they only create illusions of the future, while God teaches to live daily. In Rome, Cody Williams, Currents News. Nate Pritchard has had a difficult life. The five-year-old has had heart disease since birth. Now, when he was three, Nate, who loves horses, sent a special request to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And then this happened. What is in here? Do you know who that is? That's your horse, Nate. It's your horse, your very own horse. What do you think? Let him out in pasture. <laughs> Well, of course, that's what they should do. Take them out of pasture. The Missouri Make-A-Wish took care of everything, providing a stable and enough land for Nate and his new buddy, Silver, to saddle up for some long rides. Oh, that face. That is Currents News. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Liz Pablis. Please set your DVR to record this program so that you never miss it, because we are putting your faith in the news. Hope to see you again next time.